Nafila Zaman and today we are going to learn cells in biology. So have you ever wondered that what exactly our body is made up of? Our body is made up of cells. Cells are the basic unit of life. It's what every single living matter is made up of. These are the simplest units that can live independently and inside the cells thousands literally thousands of chemical reactions occur every single second and it is these reactions that keep the bodies of plants and animals working all of these reactions taken together form the metabolism of the cell here i have drawn two cells a generalized animal cell and a plant cell now these cells they contain a mass called protoplasm it is a complex jelly-like substance and 70 to 90 percent of it contains water and the rest of it contains mineral salts and organic compounds such as carbohydrates fats and proteins and the protoplasm of a cell consists of three parts the nucleus cytoplasm and cell surface membrane now let's look at these three components in more details so what exactly is a nucleus in this animal cell, this entire portion is called the nucleus. In the plant cell, this is the nucleus. Now, in this nucleus, it is you can see that it is surrounded by this membrane. This membrane is called the nuclear envelope, which separates the nuclear content, which separates the nucleus content from the surrounding cytoplasm. We'll talk about cytoplasm in more details but let's know that this is called cytoplasm. Inside this nucleus you can see these threads. So there is a network of thread-like structures called chromatin. These chromatin threads they contain hereditary materials that is the materials that are inherited from our parents basically our DNA. These materials control everything that is going inside the cells and during this cell division these threads condense and become highly coiled structures called the chromosome. So we know that chromatin contains DNA which are the hereditary materials that we inherit from our parents. From example brown eyes, long black hair, um, brown skin, etc. Now you see this small circle. This is called the nucleus or nucleus. These spherical structures are called nuclei and each nucleus it plays a part in the building up of proteins. So we know that this is responsible for the building up of proteins. What else does this nucleus does? The nucleus is responsible for cell reproduction. It is also needed for the continued life of the cell as well as for the repair of worn out parts. So now we have seen that inside an animal and a plant cell we can get a nucleus. In the nucleus the outer portion, this outer line is called the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope and it separates the nuclear content from the surrounding cytoplasm. Then we can see that it has this thread-like structure called chromatin. This thread-like structure called chromatin contains DNA that is the materials which are inherited from our parents and these are responsible for everything that is happening inside our cells. Then we have this spherical structure or this circle which is called the nucleus. Then each nucleus has to build up proteins. It helps in the building up of proteins. And that is all about the nucleus of an animal and a plant cell. Since we have talked about nucleus, 
Let's now talk about cytoplasm. I have already told you that this portion is called the cytoplasm. It usually forms the larger part of the cell and is the place where most life processes occur. In this cytoplasm, we can find many organelles and one of these organelles is called the mitochondria. This is the mitochondria. A mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell. These are involved in the release of energy from food substances during cell respiration. In the plant cell, we can also find a mitochondria right here. In the plant cell, we can also find a mitochondria and these are just involved in the release of energy from food substances during cell respiration and we will talk about this in more details in the next few videos. Now there are some differences between plant cells and animal cells. Plant cells may also contain the organelles called chloroplasts. These are the chloroplasts in the plant cell. Now what do the chloroplasts do? We know that plants make their own food. But how do they do that? Chloroplasts are the sites where plants can make their food, combining together carbon dioxide and water using the energy from sunlight to make sugar. So this is the function of chloroplasts. A plant cell may also contain a large vacuum. This is called the vacuum. A vacuum is a fluid field space enclosed by a membrane. This membrane is called the tonoplast. Animal cells may also have small vacuoles. For example, these are the vacuoles in an animal cell. But you see that they are very small compared to the plant cell. And they are usually not permanent. Vacuoles may contain water and food substances. Now, a plant cell you can see has a large central vacuum which contains a liquid called a cell sap. Cell sap contains dissolved substances such as sugar, mineral salts, and amino acids. Let's write it down. Contain sugars, amino acids, and mineral salts. The large vacuole is enclosed by a membrane which I already said is called the tonoplast. Now, in the animal cells as well, we can find a pair of tiny structures close to the nucleus which are called the centrioles. Now what do the centrioles do? These play a part in cell division and they are absent in most plant cells. We have talked about nucleus and cytoplasm yet we have not talked about a very important structure of our cell which is called the cell surface membrane. So the cytoplasm is surrounded by a structure which is called the cell surface membrane. It can also be said as the plasma membrane. It is a partially permeable membrane which controls structures entering in or leaving out of the cell. So this is our cell surface membrane. We write it in short form. And this, the inner portion, is called our cell surface membrane. What is the function of a cell surface membrane? It controls structures entering or leaving out of the cell, which is why it is called a partially permeable membrane or called the plasma membrane.
in plant cells, we can also see that there is another line. Now, what is this wall called? It is called the cell wall. In plant cells, we have a cell wall in addition to the cell surface membrane which encloses the whole cell. It is made up of cellulose and it protects the cell from any kind of injury. So we have seen in this video a generalized animal and a plant cell. All typical cells have cell membrane, that is the cell surface membrane or the plasma membrane, which is a partially permeable membrane to allow substances to enter or leave the cell. We have the cytoplasm where chemical reactions or most of life processes take place. We have the nucleus which contains the DNA and which controls everything that is going inside the cell. We have the mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell and the organelle where aerobic respiration occurs. And we also have some structures which are only found in animal cells and plant cells. For example, in animal cells we have the centrioles which play a part in cell division and we have the small vacuoles which are usually not permanent. In plant cells we have a large central vacuole which contains the cell sap which contains sugars, amino acids and mineral salts. We have the cell wall which encloses the whole cell. It is made up of cellulose and protects the cell from injury. Then we have the chloroplasts, which are the sites where plants make their own food using carbon dioxide and water combining with sunlight to make sugar. And that is all about this video. I really hope that you liked it. We still have not finished this chapter yet and we'll continue in the next video. Thank you so much.